a month and when you say it, I mean knows you're a new person, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. But January I think be six years, Sister Sue, since I gave my heart to the Lord. It feels like more it's hard to believe. Somebody say, is that all? Trust me, amen. It's a long road to get there. And it's been a long road since, amen. But I can you believe that came in six years, amen. When I had my stories and like some, some of you can relate, some of you can't, but I just thank God. You, it's just hard to put it to work, Sister Sue. Six years ago, amen. You know, I'm coming off a 20-year drug binge, basically, amen. About 150 pounds, amen, and landed myself in a jail, amen, about 154 pounds, hope, hopelessly. Strung out on drugs and alcohol and burned every bridge in my life, amen. There was no hope, Sister Sue. There was no other hope. I was either going to end up in jail, in prison for life, amen, or I was going to end up in a graveyard, amen, on my way to hell, amen. But I can't help if I feel the Lord at every time I tell that story, Sister Sue. It ain't some big uh, fancy story. It's simple this. Something changed that night. I just had had enough in that day, Sister Sue. I thought for sure I'd be dead before the day that day were in question. But I simply got upon my knees, amen. And ask the Lord into my heart, amen. Yes. And I say, I always sounds like I tell us exactly the same. It's because I remember it like it happened an hour ago, yes. sister. So you'll never forget that first experience with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, amen. And I couldn't explain it, but I knew something inside of me had changed, amen. Yes. And I wasn't there yet. I didn't know nothing, Brother Tony. I, I grew up in, in Pentecostal church. I didn't pay much attention. No, I admit it. I was a preacher's kid, amen. And I didn't pay much to, you know what they say about pastor's kids, preacher's kids. I didn't pay much attention. I knew there was a God, though, and I believed it. And somewhere deep down inside on that night, I remembered some things I'd heard from my grandmother, and I remember her telling me there's somebody I could call on, amen. Yes. And I called upon his name, sister, sister, and he answered, amen, on that yes. night. I didn't know much about religion, Brother Michael, amen. I didn't, hadn't read much of the Bible other than here and there as a child, but something I'm not talking about, just I'm not talking about church tonight, religion, amen. I'm talking about something inside of me changed, amen. Yes. And I wasn't perfect on that day, and it was still a long road after that, Brother Michael. But I knew that my life had changed, and I'd never be the same, amen. And in six years, in that time, amen, six two, he fulfilled a prophecy for me with my grandmother. She said he's going to restore everything the devil stole from you. And that six short years, he's restored everything. But I messed up. I, you ain't used to hearing that. Hey, man, we don't usually say it. Everything that I destroyed, everything that I did, Sister Sue, it is all free will. That's a whole nother message. I could camp out on that one for about two hours, but I won't. We need to learn how to look in the mirror and say, maybe it's my fault, amen. Maybe it's something I did, amen, tonight. But we'll get off of that. I want to get right into the message tonight, amen. I want to leave enough time. Where's Brother Russell at? Hey man, he's going to signal me there in case I get long-winded, amen, because I really want to be praying, amen. Brother Michael at midnight, and Brother Michael's going to, uh, he's been praying about it all day, right around that time, maybe about 15 till, I don't know, I, I can't look at a watch and worship, I don't know. I'll do my best tonight, and we'll, we'll see what happens, amen, but Brother Michael prepared, he's going to do a prayer and speak a blessing over the whole year, yes, uh, to speak a blessing like they did in the Bible days, he's going to speak a blessing from the Lord over 2024, amen. But this altar's open at any time, amen, tonight. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4, amen, tonight. Hallelujah. They like to call it a New Year's resolution, Johnny, amen. Robin said something today that resonated with me. I never liked that word resolution anyway. That's, that's a worldly word to me. And most time a resolution, you don't ever stick to it, amen. I we won't stick with what Robin said. It's a vision, amen. We have a vision. Do you have a vision? Do you have a New Year's vision for the new year, amen? A vision for your life. A vision for your walk with God. A vision for your family. A vision for your church, amen. Praise the Lord. If you don't have a vision, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Luke chapter 4, amen. I can sit up here and tell you all night what my New Year's vision is, but I can't say it no plainer than Jesus says it right here in what we're about to read. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. I read this the other night, Sister Sue, and I couldn't think of no 
better passage of scripture for New Year's Eve, amen. Or for your New Year's resolution, if that's what you want to call it. I couldn't think of I couldn't put it no better, Brother Michael. And what Jesus is about to tell us here. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4, verse 16, amen. You got it? Say amen. amen. Say amen loud. Wake amen. up, amen. amen. We're about to get woke up in here, amen. amen. We're about to get wild up in here, brother. brother. The Lord's going to take amen. his place over. Yes, I claim it sir. right now in the name of Jesus. You can't sleep during a revival, brother Michael. Amen. Amen. That's why a lot of people don't like a revival. Because you can't sleep during a re amen. revival of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 16, it says, and he came to Nazareth. He's going back to his home town, amen, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read, amen. That's the church in those days, or the idea of the, the religious place, the holy place in that day. And they were delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he'd opened book, keep in mind, this is peculiar. In those days, something... Joe Schmo off the street didn't just walk in and start reading. Most of them couldn't read, amen. amen. Only the scribes, Pharisees could read. So imagine the shock when Jesus walked in off the street, walked to the pulpit, opened the book of Isaiah, and began to read. This is a shocking thing. It's a scandalous thing, amen. And I imagine it was, a, I'll just say it was a freaky thing to him. Because one, who is this man, amen, speaking with authority. So just keep in mind, when he began to read this, every eye in the building was upon him, amen. Hallelujah. He says, There delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he'd opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And I want you to listen closely to the red words tonight. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it back to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. I imagine you could hear a pin drop. Amen. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Father God, I thank you for your words tonight. You put in my heart, Lord. I ask you to give me the wisdom to bring forth. Let your words come forth, Father. Let thy will be done, Lord, as we hear going into a new year. We're in your house, Lord. Our focus is upon you. We praise you, Lord, for your mercy and your goodness tonight. Touch each and every heart. Make them receptive to your words, Lord. Use me as you will, we pray. If they be in here not saved, Lord, or look warm, amen, convict their heart draw them back into you. Like a Holy Ghost fire, we pray, Lord. We need Holy Ghost fire, Lord, here tonight, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated, amen. Hallelujah. As long as you don't go to sleep, you can be seated, amen. You get sleepy, stand up, amen, shout or something, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, that's just that's one of my favorite passages. That's from the book of Isaiah, amen. I can't off the top of my head, Andrew, tell you the scripture and verse, amen. That was written a long time before Jesus come along as a prophecy. Can you imagine that scene, amen? Jesus was just well, Andrew's word, he was just savage. Well, yeah. He walked up in the temple, he grabbed the holy book that really no mouth street was supposed to touch. He flopped it open, Sister Sue, and it was amazing that he could, you know, they weren't used to somebody, those people couldn't read in those days. Amen. He began to read it. He says he shut the book and handed it back to the preacher. Amen. And then basically told him, what I just read is a prophecy, and it's fulfilled right now in front of your eyes. Can you imagine the power in that tonight? I don't have to pray, Brother Johnny, about the new year all week. Amen. A new year. Amen. It just seems like, amen, around the new year, a lot of people get a lot of big goals, brother. <laughs> uh, right? I read some more statistics that gym memberships go up about 75% every New Year's, amen. Why? Because everybody says, I'm going to lose weight this New Year this year, amen. I ain't making fun of nobody. Let's be real. Most of us don't stick to it. I've been saying I'm going to lose 12 pounds for about seven years now, amen. And I, I lose three or four here, but I find it again somewhere along the line, Sister Sue. There's all types of resolutions we hear. Well, I'm going to quit smoking this year, amen. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to quit that. Let's face it tonight, most 
resolutions that we make this soon that we don't follow through upon. Amen. I told everyone today I read, it says my 2024 is going to be about taking the clothes out of the dryer and folding them as soon as I get out of the dryer. Amber said, that ain't going to happen. Amen. It ain't going to happen tonight. Amen. What I'm trying to say to you is that's worldly thing, a resolution. I'm talking about a vision tonight. I'm talking about a vision in your life, in your walk with God, in your spiritual life. We're talking about spiritual things here tonight, amen. And I said, Lord, what would be the most important thing? If this was the last year, Lord, I got to walk this earth, what would be the most important thing you could preach tonight, amen? And I heard a word, and Brother Michael, I didn't even have to look it up, amen, to even know, but I heard the word distinction, amen. Distinction, amen. And I know it ties right in with being anointed, amen. Jesus stood right here in front of these people, Sister Jenny, and he's great. he was talking about himself, even though they didn't realize it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me, amen. He told them that he's anointed, Brother Michael, and then he told them exactly what he was anointed to do, amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, everybody in this building is anointed for something, amen. You're anointed for something. Even if you're not saved in here, God, there's something deep down inside of you that you're anointed to do. Now, whether you fall into that anointing, amen, that's between, that's on you, amen. But everybody in here is called for a purpose, amen, in the kingdom of God, amen. The word anointed, amen, it empowers a man or woman to function supernaturally, amen. It means you're filled with all the fullness of God so that you can faithfully do his work in this world. I don't think it's being preached enough these days. When I was a kid, I heard my mom say the word anointed, anointing. It seemed like every two sentences, amen. The anointing, the anointing, amen. First problem, Brother Michael, is nobody realizes they're anointed. I believe as a church here, as a church family, amen, if everybody would realize, first step, that we were anointed, Brother Michael, we would be dangerous. As a church, amen. We wouldn't have to worry about it. Sister Sue, everybody be healed. Eh? I have to believe that they'd be drawn in by the thousands, amen. If we'd all just stand up and realize I'm anointed, amen. The Spirit of God is upon me, amen. To preach the gospel to the poor, he said. He praised the Lord to the deliverance to the captives, covering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, amen. You have to recognize whose authority you're walking in today, amen. I'm going to get real tonight because I feel like the realer I can get, the more awake y'all be tonight. Amen. And we ain't talking about playing church tonight. Amen. We ain't talking about posting a few scripture. We ain't talking about reading your daily bread in the morning and then not think about God again until the next morning when you pick that daily bread. I'm talking about anointing. Uh, supernatural. Them chill bumps that's on me right now. It ain't cold in it. I promise you it ain't. What is that? Amen. What's that feeling I feel? Even if you're not saved when you walk in a Holy Ghost service and they feel that feeling that comes up and down you. Brother Russell calls it the warm cold chills whatever he calls it. I'm talking about the supernatural power of God. Powerful things. Amen. That nothing can stand in the face. Nothing that pure can stand in front of it tonight. Let's just get that straight tonight. I'm talking about life changing experience tonight. Amen. When you realize you're anointed, amen, it means you're walking in divine power, Brother Michael. You have divine authorization, amen. And we need to start reading the Word of God and see just what authority we have. I've been preaching it for about four years now. I want to see what Jesus was talking about when he said these works you see me do. You will do greater. Amen. I'm not up here just to say, I tell everybody I go to church. Amen. And yeah, I'm a pastor. And I know. Amen. I want to see the miracle. I want to feel the power. I want to see the glory of God. Amen. For my life, brother mine, and for your life. Everybody in here is anointed. If you're saved tonight, if you are saved, you are anointed. Amen. Yes, amen. You can tell people about you. Yes, you can lay hands on somebody and pray for them. You pour your anointing oil out and anoint your head with oil and pray and claim the blood of Jesus and claim the healing or whatever you see fit in Jesus' name. You have that authority. You have the authority to rebuke the devil. Amen. Cast out devils, he said. 
the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Amen. The quicker we get out, get outside just reading the here and there, Brother Michael, and get into the meat of the Word, amen, and get our prayer life back where it's supposed to be each and every day of our life, amen. Then you'll begin to feel that, and then you'll begin to live and walk in the anointing of God for your life tonight, amen. You're all anointed to do something, amen. It's not just the ones up here in the pool on the stage. It's not just the ones on YouTube. You are anointed. If you're saved and the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, you are anointed to do something, amen. And it's not just spiritual things. It's things in our life. You're anointed. You Some of you mothers in here, you're anointed to raise that child, amen. You are anointed to raise that child. You're anointed. I heard a preacher say it today. You're anointed to raise little Johnny, amen. Because if anybody else got him, they'd have killed him, Sister Sue. They'd have beat him to death, amen. You are anointed for a time and place such as this, amen, tonight. Brother Andrew, some people's got different anointings, amen. Do I know people with money just follows them everywhere they go, amen. Saved and not saved people. And the things that we have to strive and work for, it just comes to certain people naturally. You're anointed tonight, amen. You're anointed to fund and help the kingdom of God, amen. There's anointings in your life. We just have to recognize, amen, that we're walking in the anointing of God. Each and every one you in here tonight, amen. It's already inside of you. God's already placed everything you need, amen, inside of you to walk into the anointing and to the will of God for your life tonight, amen. You believe that tonight and got quiet, amen. It means if I'm anointed to be the pastor at Marytown Community Church, Brother Michael, that means God has put everything inside of me that I need to fulfill that call. I don't know I have to do is stay faithful and pray and serve Him with everything in me. It's already, I don't have to wonder, can I do it, amen? Will I make it? He's already told you you're anointed to do this. So that means everything that you need is already inside of you. Amen. To complete the task He set before you today, amen. Hallelujah. Some people say, boy, God put things on your heart and you think, I can't do that. Let me give you a little uh, a spoiler alert. If he put it on your heart, that means he knows you can do it, amen. And he wants you to get down to business tonight, amen. We all have a ten potential inside of us, amen. God created the earth, Brother Michael, amen. Say when he created the earth, the Bible says that he said there let there be light. We all know the story. Let there be this. He didn't say let there be, let there be corn, let there be green beans, amen. Let there be squash. Let there be you know what I mean tonight? He they made the earth, the dirt, amen. The potential for all that was already in it, amen. And it just took off from there. When he made the oceans, amen, he didn't say, let there be bass, let there be catfish, let there be no, amen, tonight. He made the ocean and let there be waters upon the, the waters, amen. The potential for life was already there, amen, and it took off from there. That same potential is inside of you, amen. Once you get the anointing of God on your life, amen, everything that falls within the bounds of that calling, it's already inside of you. You just got to bring it out today. You're not going to bring it out reading the Word once a week, amen. You're not going to bring it out never hitting your knees, amen. You're not going to bring it out, amen. What, love, not loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. I'm just trying. I feel like I'm preaching pretty good tonight. I'm just trying to get out the same old, same old way, man. I'm trying to make a distinction. There's a distinction that's supposed to be upon the people of God, amen, that when the world looks at you, they know there's something different, amen. There's something different about you, amen, that when you come and you come out of the church or that you ask them something about the Lord or you tell them there's something inside of you and that they know, amen, this man is a man of God. He's a woman of God, amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a generation out there, Sister Jessica, they don't want to be told they can do anything they want to and go to heaven, amen. I can go, Brother Michael, and I'm telling you, I don't want to, they don't want you to go try to blend in with them and then invite them to church, amen. They need to hear a word that's going to get deep down inside of their soul, amen. I keep saying it and saying it. You can't save the world if you look just like it, amen. And you ain't going to bring them in if you look just like them, amen, tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Distinction, amen. amen. What is distinctive about your life tonight? He says, all questions I want us to ask ourselves tonight, amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're walking in a power, Brother Michael, that the rest of the world don't have. Yeah. And it's simply this. If you, you, all you got to be saved tonight uh -huh. and striving every day of your life to get closer to Jesus Christ. I call it principle of exception. You're, you're the exception to the road. Have you ever read Psalm 91? Read it tonight if you haven't. We're the exception, Brother Michael. You know what that means, amen? Principle of exception. It means it might happen to everybody else. Because you serve the Lord, it won't happen to you. Hallelujah. It won't happen to you, amen. Somebody, he said a thousand may fall at my right hand, ten thousand at my side. He said, but nothing by any means shall touch me. Here. He said, only with your eyes. Shall you behold it, amen? That means only you'll see it, amen. That's why I had try, brother Michael, that's why so many problems. You have different, if you're anointed tonight, you have different kind of problems, amen. If you're living in sin out there in the world, you have that just everyday problem, amen. Car wouldn't start. They forgot my fries over at Wendy's, amen. This and that, just problems every day. Amen. This and that little thing. When you're anointed from God, amen, it's when you're up at three in the morning, amen. Something's stirring in my soul, sisters. I can't sleep. Amen. I'm fighting off depression. Amen. I feel like I fell short on the Lord today. It's a different battle. Amen. Yes, amen. Never forget that. Amen. amen. Stronger the anointing. Amen. amen. The harder the battle. Amen. In Jesus' name tonight. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to realize something tonight. God didn't make us, Brother Michael, to blend in to the world. Amen. Right. Woo! Amen. Here we go. There's that point. I got to get on your nerves at some point in this message. Amen. He didn't make us to blend in to the world. He said we're the salt of the earth. Amen. The salt changes the flavor of everything you put it in. Amen. Tonight. He didn't make us to blend in, amen. There's somebody, I feel it, who am I preaching to? There's somebody in here tonight, me and Amber's talking about something on the way to church, amen. Somebody in here feels lonely right now. You feel isolated, amen. Let me tell you something, amen. You just keep going on for the Lord, amen. That's because God has maybe pulled you away from all that mess. Because he don't want you using, losing your uniqueness, amen. He don't want you blending in with that bunch over there, amen. He don't want you blending in with that bunch. Because we're naturally, emotionally needy tonight amen. as humans amen we're needy brother Michael we're naturally we want to be accepted by everybody amen we want to come you know what happens when we'll compromise we'll go over here we want to be accepted with this crowd we'll compromise our uniqueness to fit in with them amen God don't want that for our life and you know what happens tonight you become ordinary this ain't nothing about, amen. They talk about being better than nobody. Holy don't even mean that, Brother Mark. Holy just means set apart, amen. We're set apart for a holy purpose, amen. I said earlier today, I don't want to be like the world, amen. I don't want to look like the world. I don't want to talk like the world, amen. You want to know why I like being at this altar at midnight every year? Because for about 30 years straight, I was out there serving the devil on New Year's, amen. So I figure I hope the Lord, the Bible says a thief has to pay back, amen, seven times. I figure I owe him a year, and as many years as I can get in, every year that changes, Sister Sue, I'm going to be on my knees, amen, praising him into another year on this earth today. We don't think about it like that. Let me tell you something tonight. If you're not saved in here tonight, or if you talk, when people, I said it earlier, people talk about their old life, brother. it's natural what say that when I was out there in no sin, when I was out there in sin. No, when you was out there serving the devil, amen. When I was out there serving the devil, as the Bible says plainly, amen, no man can serve two men. Let's quit playing around tonight, amen. You even serving God or you serving the devil, amen. There ain't no in between. There ain't no in between heaven and hell where the uh, decent people go, amen. They didn't quite make no, amen, tonight. Jesus said, the prince of this world coming, and he had nothing in me. He said, the whole world's under the sway of the wicked one, amen, tonight. Hallelujah. If you're living in sin here tonight, you're blending in with the world, amen. I'm just going to say you're ordinary. And you're missing the mark, amen. And this ain't nothing, you know, don't take on everything like I'm saying we're better than you. It's not that. It's a command, amen. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You are never going to win a soul for the kingdom of God, I promise you. 
until you become saved. Thank you. I got two more hit under here. But thank you anyhow. Amen. Tonight, praise the Lord. They say, hey, you give a drink cup of water in the name of a prophet. Give a prophet's reward. Remember that? Amen. Tonight. Hallelujah. I praise God tonight. What was I saying? I lost track. I got excited about that water tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. God didn't call us to blend in, Brother Michael. Amen. He called us to change the crowd that we're put in. Amen. If God changes your job, amen, the people, your co-workers, they shouldn't be changing you. You should be changing that whole environment that you're in, amen. We work jobs, Brother Michael, and have co-workers don't even know we're saved, amen. They don't know nothing about our lives, about us serving the Lord. How are we separate? How are we come out from them? How's our light shining if nobody ever knows that we're saved tonight, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. Praise the Lord. I want you to think about David for a minute. God anointed David to want to be king of Israel. Amen. He was a shepherd. Amen. That was the lowest occupation there was in those days. Amen. I ain't going to throw no occupations out there. I've had some bad jobs in the time, but I don't want to think nobody. Amen. We all know what the low pay jobs are. Amen. Whatever. But a shepherd was the lowest form of occupation you could have. God anointed him to be king. The oil was poured over his head. Did, did, did he jump straight on the throne? No. Amen. The Bible says he was on the run for a long time after that. Then he ended up in a cave. Amen. With a hundred men. Amen. In old hillbilly terms, the Bible says that they were broke pretty much and disgusted. Amen. They didn't even have food to eat. Amen. They had to go in the tip on eat the show bread tonight. Amen. But what happened in that time when they went in that cave with David when they come out the Bible says they were called David's mighty men amen he changed the whole crowd that he was put in amen tonight that's what we're called to do change the flavor of every situation that we're put in tonight amen who wants the anointing of God amen who has the anointing of God you don't have to raise your hand you know what I'm talking about tonight I want my goal for 2024 is to continue to walk in the anointing of God tonight hallelujah hallelujah is there a distinction in your life? I meant what I said earlier. If you knew without a shadow of a doubt. And this is so this is as clear as you can put it tonight. This is how you can test and see where your life really is with Jesus Christ tonight. If you got Jesus come, if we got a vision tonight, brother, like, and when he said that this is going to be the year that I return, amen. But he didn't tell us what day. I wonder how many people in here's life would change dramatically, amen. I'm going to let that simmer for a minute. How much would your life change, amen? Sister Jessica, you wouldn't be able to beat them out of the church house, amen. We wouldn't have enough pews in here, Brother Russell, amen. They wouldn't be nobody missing Sunday school, amen. They wouldn't be nobody missing Bible study. They'd be out in the streets preaching the word of God. You wouldn't be able to get through here, Sister Sue, in the streets. Out of Welch, they'd be out preaching the word of God, amen. Let me tell you something. If it, that's what it took, amen, to get you to serve him with your whole heart, we got problems today, amen. Whatever he's putting on your heart, if you truly answer that question, what would you do differently? That's what he's wanting from you, amen. Do you realize that? The thing, that's the conviction in your heart. I just tricked you into conviction, amen. If you know he'd come back tomorrow, amen. Well, if you know you'd come back in a month, amen, what would you do, amen, today? That's the way he wants us to live our life for him, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. What is your vision? For 2024, amen. As a church, Sister Jenny, I've said it from day one since we opened the doors. My vision, amen, is have a church full of anointed people on fire for God, amen. On fire for God, Sister Sue, and fear the Lord, amen, and respect the house of God, amen. If you give us 10, amen, anointed on fire people, we could change just about change the county, amen. If you give us 30, we'd change the world, I believe, amen. We wouldn't have nobody sick, Sister Sue, amen. We wouldn't have any people be healed left and right. We begin to see the miracles. Why? Because people with faith would build. Jesus told them, if you don't believe them because of that, believe it for the work's sake, amen. But we do it all for the glory of God, amen. The anointing changes things in your life tonight. Amen. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. There's no vision, 
people perish. Amen. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, church, we're living in the last days. Sisters. I preached my first two funerals this year. Amen. Changed my life forever. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, on that day, Sister Sue, everything changes, amen. Ain't nobody worried about the petty thing of the world when they're at a funeral, amen. Ain't nobody worried about nothing tomorrow, Brother Michael, at a funeral, amen. Grief will do something to you deep down inside, amen. On that day when you're laying in that casket, amen, or however you choose to go, brother, you ain't worried about nothing on this earth, I promise you. You ain't worried about the cars in the driveway. You ain't worried about what so-and-so said about you last weekend. You ain't worried about what so-and-so wore to church that night. You ain't worried about I ain't going down there because he's down there, amen. You ain't worried about nothing on Facebook. You ain't worried about commenting on something you shouldn't even be involved in on social media. You ain't worried about what happened to so-and-so down at work, amen. You're not worried about nothing paying this world. You're worried about what Brother Arthur was just talking about. There's going to be two answers, amen. And that's all you can worry about. And it symbols down to this, does he know you, amen. So many of us say we know the Lord. That's not the question tonight. Does he know you tonight? Amen. You are anointed in here tonight. I'm hoping somewhere, so who am I preaching to? I'm hoping that gets down in somebody's spirit tonight. Sister Sue, I'm anointed. Amen. I'm a child of the most high God. Amen. You know what the difference in the distinction is, Brother Michael? Amen. Things can go wrong in a sinner's life, and things can go wrong in our life, and people be asking you how. Did you make it through that? Amen. You don't even know yourself. Amen. It's the power of God. He said, I never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Some of you in here are going to keep in through things, Sister Sue. They would have destroyed anybody else, amen. Anybody else would have laid down and given up, amen. But the Lord brought you through tonight. Some of you in here, amen. In the hallelujah, somebody else's marriage, Sister Sue. Somebody else's marriage, it would have fell apart a long time ago. But because you put the Lord in the middle of it, you pulled through, amen, tonight. Who am I preaching to tonight? You're the exception to the road. Brother Mike. Hey, I ain't never had no high paying job, amen. But somehow, in the last six years, I've kept a grand or two in the bank, amen. I ain't never missed a bill. How? I still don't know. The numbers don't add up, amen. It just don't add up, amen. Somehow, since why? I'm the exception to the rule, amen. The things of the world don't apply to me. They don't apply to you, brother. They don't apply to you, brother Johnny, amen. We're the exception to the rule. It might happen to them out there, brother mine. It won't happen to us today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I look sometimes, amen, and I'm hurt, amen, when I talk to sinners, amen, or unbelievers, amen. And I say that it's not judging, it's just you got to say, when you're preaching, you got to talk something, amen. When you're talking to those that are not saved, amen. And they just want to answer, and you look at it, their whole life falling apart, amen. And they're trying to fix it for sale. And they think money's going to fix it, amen. Or they think this one's going to fix it. Or they think my wife would just come back. Everything will be all right. I have my husband back. They don't understand, brother. It's obvious. It's, it's anything you ever see. They just need the Lord in their life, amen. They're walking around in a storm. Every day they don't even realize it, amen. They're never happy, amen. Sunday down the family, they can have everything in the world. Why do you think we got so many celebrities commit suicide, amen? They have all the money in the world, and yet they're still unhappy, brother. Mark. The family sitting around the table, they're still unhappy, amen. They can have everything you could ever ask for, amen. Brother Solomon, or Solomon said it best in Ecclesiastes, amen, because they didn't have the Lord in their heart. There's always going to be something missing today. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, I want to walk in the anointing of God. Amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You ready? Let's read that again, what Jesus said. He said, we're going, because I want you to miss the sear in your brain. He said, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's telling you anointed. He's anointed. And now he's going to tell you exactly what we're anointed to do. Amen. To preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. This is part of the sermon why I start to put your steel toes on. I'm going to step on some toes tonight. When's the last time you told anybody about the Lord? Amen. Not the ones you see. You know what I mean? Not the ones you go to church with. 
I'm talking about when's the last time you went out of your way? When's the last time you put somebody on your heart and you obeyed and you went and told them about the Lord? Amen. 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 To preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. Yes. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Yes. Wouldn't it be great, Brother Michael, somebody, I don't look for this, but somebody come to you one day and you say, Brother Jeff, I'll shoot. Or Brother Michael, hey, amen, I was going through a time in years ago. You remember that? And you talked to me and it brought me through that, amen. To heal the brokenhearted, amen. When was the last time you sought somebody out you knew was in pain, amen, going through something, amen, and tried to comfort them, amen, and got outside and maybe, sometimes maybe it caused you a little in. Convenience, amen. Yeah. And it might be, that's kind of the point sometimes. That's what sacrifice is all about. This great uh, serving the Lord ain't always going to fit into your schedule, amen. amen. Sometimes He's going to require things in you that amen. don't fit in. Amen. And you just got to trust Him and go on, amen. amen. And say, I don't understand it, Lord. I don't really have time. But you said, go, I'm going to go, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. To preach deliverance to the captives. We got a whole county outside of these walls. They are captive right now. They're captive to Satan, amen. They're slave to sin, amen. They're slave to drug addiction. They're slave to adultery, sister, sister. They're slaves, amen, out there. They're captive. They're in bondage, amen. And we sit in here hiding behind these church walls. We have the answer for them, amen. And they're never going to get it until we open our mouth and preach Jesus. Like Sister Becky is just talking. Jesus. You don't have to be a preacher. You can tell, you can say that word, can't you? Jesus, amen. You need to know Jesus, amen. I have your answer. It's Jesus, amen. I promise you tonight, if it's God's will for that person to get saved that day or to get the seed planted, you won't have to say much to them anyway. You just have to be obedient, amen. Sister Jessica and Harry, they say they're going out door to door and we make fun of them saying that we are Jehovah's Witnesses now. No, but that shows hunger, brother Mark. You are the burden for the lost souls, amen. Where's the burden? When did we become so lazy, amen, as Christians, amen? And we, sometimes you're going to be inconvenienced for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's going to be uncomfortable, amen. Hell's going to be a lot more uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To think, amen. And I'm guilty of tonight too, Brother Michael. To think, amen, that I, and I said it once or twice today. Man, we got to go. We got to be at church at midnight. I'm step on my own toes now. Man, I got to work tomorrow. Do you understand all the things I just listed he done for me, Brother Michael? All the things I just listed. I remember past New Year's, Brother Michael, last Four up six years ago, I was homeless, amen. Strung out without a hope, amen. No hope in my heart, amen. I've been hungry, amen. I've been in jail, prisons, amen. Depressed, amen. Miserable, amen. And he brought me and delivered me out of every one of these things that I just listed. I have a home to go to tonight when I live here. I've got a comfortable bed. To sleep in. My children, amen, will be safe and secure, amen. I got the need to it, honey. I still don't know how that happened, amen. I got a job to go to. Do you understand? And do you believe that somebody in here I know I got to be preaching has been through some things, amen. The Lord's delivered you out of some things, amen. Now, how soon we forget. I read a quote that said, Gratitude is the shortest lived of all emotions, amen. And I'm playing about going to the house of God. Uh, on until midnight, amen. One day a year, do what, amen. I miss church because I'm tired, amen. I don't go here and I don't, I can't go out, Lord. I can't do that tonight because of this, because of that tonight. I say, what well, if the Lord take us back, amen, to where He brought us from, amen, and show us, amen. That's where the humility comes in, amen, in Jesus' name tonight. Oh, how soon we forget, amen, where the Lord has brought us from. 
Woe to the day, Sister Jessie, when I forget how far God has brought me. Amen. Woe to the day, Sister Sue, when I forget all that he's done for me. And I, the day that I forget, amen, that I'm just a wretched sinner, amen. I was a wretched sinner that he reached down and plucked out of the fire, amen. If he tells you go talk to that drug addict, honey, you go talk to him, amen. Because then most of us, we wouldn't know better, amen. When the last hour, they take a second and think, where were you today when the Lord found you, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What time is it, Brother Russell? I hate to. 11.45, really? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, speed up. Brother Michael, you get ready. Get ready. Brother Michael's going to come up here and speak a blessing in a minute. Amen. I just read that in the Old Testament. It just, you know how they bless you. Remember Jacob, he wanted to bless, speak a blessing over. That was a big thing for a man of God. They just went around always begging the man of God, speak a blessing over me, please. Right. Come on, Brother, please, speak a blessing over me. He's going to speak a blessing. Over the next year, amen. But I want you to remember something. Somebody in here tonight is going through some things, amen. I was reading the Amber out of the Bible. It was almost my message, but the Lord changed things tonight. It said Jesus was walking through. I'm going to give you the quick version. But he said there's a funeral procession coming by, amen. They were carrying a coffin, amen. And it said the woman was weeping. It was her son in that coffin, amen. And it says she was a widow. So you imagine the grief she's going through. She's basically going to be all alone now. And it said Jesus walked up to her and said, weep not, amen. And the Bible says he laid a hand upon that casket, amen. And told him, and it said the dead man sat up in the casket alive and spoke to them. Amen. Where is this going tonight? Do you understand? So let me tell you something. There's no such thing as a hopeless situation if you're serving the Lord. Ooh, that gives me hope tonight. That gives me excitement tonight. When you begin to think of that in your everyday life, brother, no matter how bad it looks, I know one touch from the Lord will solve all of this. Amen. I can sit and rack my brain all day, Sister Sue, of how I'm going to fix it and what am I going to do. I need to be praying for God to intervene because I have one touch from Him and every thing can change to me. Some of you are just one and one uh, act of obedience away from God touching your life, amen, and making it all okay and opening up something tonight. Quit focusing on things. Just focus on serving Him, amen, being obedient to Him and walking in the anointing of God. As I get ready to let Brother Michael come, amen, I want you to get that on your mind. Do am I walking in the anointing of God? If you ain't, amen, you can leave here, and you can leave here and going into a new year, literally, amen, and say, I'm anointed amen. by the power of God. Amen. The Spirit of God is upon me, amen. amen, and you can leave here anointed and on fire for God, amen. Wouldn't it be special to say my life changed, amen, December 31st, 2033. I stepped into 2024, and I was anointed and on fire for God tonight. I'm going to be here next year preaching this same thing, amen, and I hope to see somebody's life change. Maybe I'll see somebody else preaching, Brother Andrew, that we never thought would preach, amen. That's what I pray for tonight. But let's ask Brother Michael to come, amen, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Brother Russell, you uh, give us a signal there, but I really want to, if everybody will. I like to be at the altar and praying or praying for whoever tonight. But Brother Michael, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, but come on, man, brother. Amen. A special service so I go on 30 more minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, this service that we've had in the, in the word that the Lord gave Brother Jeff, you know, all I can think about is when somebody walks through that door here at Marytown, is that they get a fire that's burning in their soul when they yeah. come in here, Amen. whether they're a sinner or they're a saint. Uh -huh. And that's what I want to speak over this church. I want to speak growth. Yeah. I want to speak the communities coming to this uh -huh. church yeah. to have to lean on when they have a problem, yeah. when they need something. Uh -huh. Amen. And the people of the church, that you will grow in your faith uh -huh. this coming year that you would make it your life's journey this coming year, that you will seek the Lord as much as you can. And I'm talking to me, too, because that's what I want. I told the Lord today, I said, Lord, I just want to be a little bit closer to you. Every day that I wake up, I want to be a little bit closer to my Father. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, the Lord spoke to me yesterday. I was sitting on my couch being a lazy bum. I'm not going to lie about it when I should have been in my word. Amen. And he said, Michael, I was watching a TV show. And I hadn't thought about nothing. I got up and I pray. And I do the things that I do when I'm at home. And this show, this kid was running. And the Lord told me, he said, Michael, sometimes I have my people to run to get them to where I want them to be. You know, and he started, I started thinking about Elijah running to that cave. You know, sometimes we'll run, but that's the only reason we're running is because he wants us to run to get us to where he wants us to be at. It's not because you're running from him. He's having you to run to something. And in 2024, what we want to run to is the Father. We want to run to the Marytown Church every time we have a church service and get close to the Lord tonight. Amen. Every time you walk in, it says the Bible says come in with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. When we come in the sanctuary, I want to speak over this church that we have to add on, that we have to put chairs out in the middle of the walkways. Hallelujah. That this is going to grow. People are going to hear about this place and they're going to want to come. They're going to hear about that fire that's burning down there in the middle of Rhoda Field and Davy. Hallelujah. That's what I want to speak over our church. And I believe that God is going to do it. I believe that he's already got his hand out. Amen. He's ready to bless. He's ready to bless over each and every person here, over each and every child, the grandchildren. He's ready to bless over you, Brother Johnny Kevin. He's ready to give you what you need. If you will just open up and accept that you have an anointing as Brother Jeff preached tonight. Yes, amen. And he'll put that fire just like Jeremiah says that each and every person here tonight, he'll put a fire that's shut up in your bones. That's what Jeremiah says. And that's what I want to speak over everybody. That we, we get closer to him. We help one another. Amen. That was one of his commandments to love one another as I have loved you. Amen. And to love our community. Oh, yeah. That's right. We got to show the community, the God, the spirit that is in us. Mm -hmm. If we walk by people and we got our nose up in the air, right. what are they seeing? Right. Are they seeing Jesus in you or are they seeing just a person that looks down their nose because they don't go to church? This has been on my heart for a while. When I go by somebody, when I even when I go into a grocery store or wherever, I don't like to sing in front of nobody, but I'll sing through that grocery store just in case there's that one person yeah, one that person. hears it because that is a conversation starter. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on Jesus. That's I'm bragging right. on what he does right. because he'll always send the right person at the right time. Well, when they need it the most. Not when you need it because it is very un inconvenient sometimes. The Lord sent me all the way to Virginia this morning. And I don't like going to Sunday school. But he sent me all the way to Virginia and there was a reason for it. And just like Sister Jessica said about getting out in the community. It was just a confirmation for me to get out in the community with everybody. The pastor said, Brother, I'd like for you to come down here and go with us house to house. I said, well... I knew that was what the Lord wants to do. He wants us out in the streets. Yes, we're good right. inside these walls, that's but we're right. talking about a church that's outside the walls, a church without walls. Yes. But it's probably getting close to the midnight hour. And just remember that when Paul and Silas was in that jail cell and said they started singing and praising. <laughs> and it said the foundation of that place shook. What I want the Lord to do it tonight is to shake your foundation into where he wants you to be and to set you free. It says they was loosed. But praise God. I want him to shake the foundation of this church. I want him to shake the foundation of this county. I want him to shake the foundation of those people out there tonight 
that's partying. I hope they have a godly encounter that they just can't explain, Brother Andrew. But I also, I want everybody to be saved. I want everybody to go Amen. with me. Amen. If I make it, Amen. we want to take as many people with us as we can. Amen. Every family member, everybody in here has got a family member that you want to go. And we want to speak favor and blessings over your homes, each and every one of you. I want to speak favor and blessings over your homes. That you prosper the way God would allow you to prosper. Whatever it is that you need coming in this new year, I pray that God would give it to you. Amen. Not that, not that you're going to be rich, but you're rich. You have everything when you have Jesus. You have everything. Amen. You got a good church family here. You got people, brothers and sisters, that's going to love you and pray for you. They're going to lift you up when you're down. Amen. And that's what we need to be doing. And I just speak over this church to grow with the people in our communities that are sick and afflicted, the ones that are out here. And I'm talking about on drugs. I've got family members right now that I would love to see come to this altar. We all do. We take this church outside of these walls this year. We let the communities know we're here. We're not going nowhere. You can't run us off. You can't talk us away. Glory to God, we're going to serve our God. We're going to get out in the streets and the communities and let people know, hey, these other churches, they might not like what we're doing, but glory to God, we're going to get out here and we're going to win some souls this year. And 2024 is going to be for this county, for this church. Out here in these streets, getting people into the house of God. Getting them back to that tear-stained altar where they belong. Amen. And getting a closer walk with Jesus every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got four minutes till time to pray. And when you're praying tonight, remember those that are out there right now. At 12 o'clock, they're just... They just start hitting the ball drops. They just start drinking and partying more. Well, remember them tonight. I was sitting here praying earlier saying, Lord, please protect them. Keep a hedge of protection over these people that when they get out and they start, they don't try to drive, that their cars be broke down or somebody would drive them to and from where they have to go. Amen. You know, it could be one of our family members that face the wrath of what they're doing. They might face that. Let's pray tonight uh -huh. that they they see where they're yeah. going wrong. They see that what they need to do is call on Jesus because it all it takes is one mistake. Amen. One bad decision. And you know, at one time in my life I was that person out there. Come on. I've been all the way up in Bluefield, West Virginia, Princeton, hitting, drinking. Don't even know how I got home. It wasn't nothing but the good Lord and some people standing in the gap for me that got me home. My grandmother's at intercessed. Hey, man, if you want to come up around the altar, we got three minutes. You want to pray into the new year? Hey, man, I'll hand it back over to Brother Jeff here. Give the Lord a hand, amen. Uh, Lord, thank you. Whatever you want to do, really, amen. And I, for the last six, five new years, I've been on my knees. So I'm going to be on my knees, but all who will gather around the altar, if you say you want to sing, but three minutes, so if you can't pray three minutes, then we got problems, amen. But I want to be on my knees praying. But let all who will, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, really, but all who will, I want to be on my knees, amen. Hallelujah. Amen.